Welcome to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. So today I'm filming the tag created by Fashionably Amy, which is five forever luxury handbags and five to sacrifice. Thank you to Bags and Bunnies for tagging me. I would tag her video and Fashionably Amy's video in the description bar below, but let's get started. So the context of this tag is that if you were going to keep five bags forever, what would they be and what would the five that you would sacrifice be for a greater good? And I believe the greater good is to fund something that you want more than those bags. Uh, and I think that fashionably Amy was looking at if she had to sell bags to fund another purchase, what would she sell? Um, or if she had to sell bags, full stop, what would she sell and why? So I am going to tell you first my five forever bags. Let's see if you can guess what they are. My first forever bag is, you probably guessed it, my Fendi Sex in the City Purple Rain Baguette in the regular size. Why is this a forever bag? Because it's limited. Uh, it is the bag that... Um, well, one of the bags that was from the Sex and the City TV show, which I watched as a late 20-something year old and an early 30 year old, and really from there grew my love of fashion and luck well, luxury handbags and shoes, more like it. Um, the fact that this bag was released in my 40th year, um, which I didn't get to celebrate the way that I wanted, um, just meant that when I saw it in the store and I picked it up, it was meant to be, and uh, for that reason, she'll always have a place in my heart. So that's my first forever bag. My second forever bag is my Chanel Classic Flap in the jumbo size. This is the black caviar leather with the silver hardware. The reason that this is number two on my list of forever bags is because it's my only classic flap. The price that I paid for this bag was about $5,800. That's just unheard of now. Um, and I don't think that I would buy a new one um, to replace it. It is in perfect condition. It's quilts are puffy. It's a 2012 um, bag. It is super functional for day, for night, for work, for casual. I really enjoy it and that's why it is a forever piece in my collection. The third forever piece in my collection is probably a surprise to you, but this one, my Gucci glazed wicker linear Sistino bag. Uh, this one got a lot of love in my 2020 bag collection for the same reason as my Sex in the City bag. It's a limited bag. It's a bag though that I think I will wear every year every summer it is a perfect neutral it's playful but dressy it goes from day to night and as i said in my 2020 bag collection video i picked this up for more than half the price well i picked this up for less than half the price that it was selling for and it's in perfect perfect condition uh, so yeah that makes it number three on my list of forever bags this one might also surprise you given a recent video that I did. Uh, but number four on my list of forever bags is the My Lady Dior in the small size in the black lamb with champagne hardware. Now, thinking about this one after I did the review um, comparison against the Fendi Mini Peekaboo in black, what I realized is, yes, this bag is an absolute classic. You can't really compare the bags in terms of aesthetics. You can definitely compare them in terms of functionality. But when I was doing the price comparison, this bag here I picked up for $5,200. They're now selling for $6,600. It's only going to go up. For that reason, I think it's going to be a forever bag in my collection because selling them doesn't really offer a return. There's nothing quite like them anywhere else and to replace it would only cost an absolute mozza and so she should just stay and we should be friends forever. And the final bag in my forever bag collection, number five, my Louis Vuitton Petite Boite Chapeau. Uh, 
I love this bag. I never thought it would be in my collection just because of the lack of functionality. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, my husband bought it for me for Christmas last year. It was a big surprise. I didn't know. I cried. I've told that story a bunch of times. Um, and again, for the same reasons as the other bags, the price to replace this, um, both from a sentimentality perspective, but also from a dollars perspective, I just can't see me doing that. And so why would I? I love it. Uh, so that makes my five forever bags. Okay, so I bet that you are wondering, there were some bags that I didn't mention that I've really been loving on this year. Are they in my sacrifice pile? So when I think about why I would sacrifice a bag, let me just make it clear. I would sacrifice it because I would get a decent return. I don't see any point selling bags where you're not going to get a decent return on them because really by the time you muck around with consignment and selling fees, what's the point? So I'd need to be getting a decent return because I wanted something that... I felt that I would use more, but I just couldn't justify coming up with the cash on top of my current handbag collection, if that makes sense. So why would I dip into my personal savings for $10,000 for a handbag, let's just say, because that's where Chanel prices are. And if I did dip my toe into the Hermes waters, 10 grand would only just be a deposit. I don't feel that I could do that justifiably without kind of really assessing where my collection was at. And I feel like that's when you start to kind of refine your collection because the things that you have, you want to get a lot of wear out of. Anyway, so that's kind of how I've justified it. So in saying that, the first thing, the first bag that I would sacrifice is one of these why because this is the only bag style that I have two of um, it makes me sad that they're on the list but I think I would get a fairly decent return on these bags I feel like I could pick them up again for a price that wouldn't hurt too much compared to some of the other ones um, and if it was going to be one, I think it would have to be this one because I'm keeping the My Lady Dior and this one would be the only white bag in my collection. Oh, it's really sad, isn't it? I'm sure I could pick up another black one, couldn't I? Look, choosing which bags to sacrifice is super hard because if I was going to sacrifice them, I would have done already. The next bag that I would consider sacrificing, I'm looking at her lovingly, is a bag that has been one of my favourites. And it's my Chanel Mini Rectangular in the Black Lamb with Silver Hardware. Why did I pick this? Because I know that I will get good money for this bag because they're still in high demand. Um, I feel... I haven't worn her very much this year, which is surprising to me. I think because I've been looking for colour, I've been looking for joy, so hence, you know, these playful sorts of bags here. Um, but at this moment in time, if I was looking for money, I feel that I could get at least five and a half thousand dollars for this, and that's a big chunk of money for a little bag that I would miss, but I'd get over it. This is a horrible, horrible video to film. I'd written these down, but actually looking at them and talking about why I would sacrifice them is really, you know, hard. So the third bag that I would sacrifice is my Chanel GST in the black caviar with silver hardware. Um, it's got things in it because I've been using it for work. I picked this one again because I picked this bag up for two and a half thousand dollars pre-loved and now they're selling for about four and a half thousand dollars pre-loved and if you want money then you've got to choose bags that are going to return money 
So with the bags that I have listed already, I'm, I'm thinking there's about $15,000 there, which like, makes logical sense, but, ooh. Ouch. Oh, okay, the fourth bag that I would sacrifice is my Louis Vuitton Cannes bag in the reverse monogram. Uh, why? Because it's sometimes hard to get, because there's still a bit of demand for it, because it's a classic. Uh, I would get a good return for this bag and I don't wear it very often. So it is really a luxury. It's, um, I love it, but it really is a luxury to have it. And if I was thinking about buying a bag that I would use a lot more, it would make sense to let go of one that I don't use so much. And because my Petite Boy Chipo is in my every, well, forever bag collection, I feel like I've done the nod, the vintage nod to the house. So I'd say goodbye to this one too. So I figure I've made a quick 20 grand by now, um, which is a lot of money, isn't it? You buy a car for that. Uh, the final bag that I would sacrifice, if I had to hypothetically sacrifice a bag for the greater good, as per the tag, would be my Chanel boy in the medium size, in the shiny grey caviar leather. Just check out how beautiful that is. And silver hardware. Why did this one make my list? I do not use it very much. I do not know why. I think that when I go for a neutral, I tend to go for white over grey. Uh, I really, I've said it before, I really need to start using this bag more. But again, I feel that I would get a decent amount back for this bag. So that would put me up to around $25,000 for five bags, five grand average for pre-loved bags. I think that's, you know, for the purpose of the tag, I think they're the right choices to have made without letting go of my forever bags. So thanks. Amy for creating this tag. Uh, wow, it was super hard. Um, making the list sounded logical, but then talking through it, um, talking through it made it really challenging. <laughs> Tell me, what's interesting to you about the bags that I've got itchy face everywhere today? What's been interesting to you about the bags that I selected for both my forever bags and also the bags that I would sacrifice? Again, I'd like to thank Bags and Bunnies for tagging me in this video and Fashionably Amy for creating this tag. If you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays and sometimes other days as well. So uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.